Thanks for joining us for Reflections on Waitangi. It was a great moment that you just saw at the interdenominational church uh, ceremony this morning where this person sang Farkaria Mai. Uh, and I actually didn't know, and this is how ignorant I was, uh, Hannah, Hannah Seddon, by the way, <laughs> thanks for being with us, um, that the lyrics are actually the lyrics of Abide in Me. I always thought it was just how great they are, but in Māori. So did I for many years, and then you start learning about these songs that you love and you hear all the time, and then it actually helps you to dig into the history and see the connections that we have. So it comes alive again, that whole song, revived for another generation. How special is it to you that you get to stand on this hallowed um, place and lead worship on a day like this? It's actually... It's, it's a really beautiful thing because as a child, I actually didn't grow up in Te Ao Māori. And so as an adult, God had made a promise to me that he, as part of my journey of restoration of those things that are important, he would restore me in, in, in terms of my cultural identity. And so to actually be here at Waitangi, which is, I'm from Ngāpuhi, I'm from Te Rarawa, to be here and to be able to worship him, which comes naturally, uh, and have those two things together uh, as, as who I am as a Māori Christian woman is a real privilege and to join with the rest of the church as well is just a really special thing to do and all creation, can you hear those cicadas and the, 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 the tui singing today, so it's been incredible yeah, yeah and the festivities in the background as well which is just so cool uh, you were just commenting off air and it is uh, so nice that everybody is back as well, there are thousands of people here and of course we went through the pandemic it was kind of heartbreaking that this place emptied out and we couldn't have these commemorations. It was heartbreaking and because a lot of effort, a lot of work had gone into preparing and not just accommodation and you know travel and all of those sorts of plans but the preparation of the heart to be able to connect with people for a kaupapa that's so important and so for those things like many others that have been cancelled we're constantly having to make adjustments. So finally, it feels like everybody who missed out on all of those other uh, opportunities over the years has made their way here and brought someone along with them. So uh, just the, the, the vibe here, the fullness of it, the noise, the diversity of people has been awesome. Yeah, I love the phrase you just used, preparation of the heart, because that, that is so true, isn't it? There is something about this place that feels hallowed you know, the birthplace of a nation. Uh, and you really do have to prepare for what um, you're going to expect from God, but also what you're going to share. So what was your preparation like for this Waitangi? Well, the first time I actually came here was in 2011, and it was the very first time. So everything was new to me and unfamiliar. And uh, I, I was just in awe of this amazing family of God that gathered and a whole lot of people who weren't necessarily Christians but for some reason wanted to wake up at 3 o'clock and join us at 5 a.m. as well. This year I was familiar with the surroundings, with the process, but to actually be able to sing and lead and worship in those services, I have never done that before. And so the preparation of the heart for me was actually about asking the Lord, how do I sing this song? that I have sung a million times, these songs that I've sung so many times in a way that is accessible um, in terms of the spirit and the people who are gathered here and what you're doing in their lives. So how do you, how can you speak to me, Lord, and make sure that my words are connected to what you're doing in the lives of, of these people here and anyone listening, uh, anyone watching, anyone uh, who is on a journey at the moment, what, what our country of Aotearoa is going through. And so I, I had a real sense that his peace, his shalom, uh, was working out as the morning progressed. And it was just a, it was a beautiful feeling to see people engaging in that. Yeah. Well, that um, moment where the commissioner shared uh, about shalom, and, and to be honest, when I, when I first heard uh, his voice, I thought, that's an Australian <laughs> sharing at Waitangi, which I don't think I've heard before. But I, I, it's been mentioned by everybody who sat on this chair, and he seemed to really capture the heartbeat of what this is all about, right? Peace and shalom, and uh, it was a special moment. It was a special moment, and um, it just goes to show that in this place, which was actually about peoples coming together, being together and trying to work it out, that you would have someone Australian uh, with a Jewish word speaking to um, people Māori, tangata whenua, tangata tiriti from all over the place. And I was thinking about the fact that shalom is this really holistic word. It is about shalom in every sense of the word. So mentally, emotionally, 
financially, relationally, culturally, structurally, all of those things where peace and uh, uh, flourishing happens. And so there's a sense when we declare those words and we hear those, those words spoken by all the people sitting there listening and maybe those at home, that that would actually ripple out amongst all of the people uh, that hear those words and are affected by them and begin to go and do their own declaring around the country as well, around the world as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you work for the Salvation Army, obviously. I can see the T-shirt. No, I just like the T-shirt. <laughs> um, how does your work with the uh, the Sallies, how does that tie into uh, Te Tiriti or Waitangi? How, how, how does the, the treaty play into what you do in the Salvation Army? To be honest, when I first started in the Salvation Army in 2004, I wasn't sure how my work as a trainee social worker actually fitted in with Te Tiriti or Waitangi. But as I've learned more, and I've gone on the journey of understanding what these words and these commitments and these promises mean, what it means in relation to the scripture, uh, what my role is as someone who is following God in terms of bringing justice and righteousness and mercy and truth and all of those things, the more I am convinced that it's not just part of my role, it's part of all of our roles, even if we work in a place which may not obviously look like uh, we might have a role to play. I think God can speak to us and use our our lives, our breath, our skills, our experience um, to breathe life into the places where we are and thereby the fulfillment of the promises of the treaty happens when there's more than just a few people on board doing that. Mm. Mm. You work in Rotorua, that's right, isn't it? So you, you you must see some some pretty hard things um, in terms of how New Zealanders are living. Uh, that's the work that you're called to in the Salvation Army as well. Mm. So h- how do you remain optimistic about the future for Aotearoa? Yeah, in Rotorua, when I moved there from Auckland, it was a real change because in Rotorua, I would say 40% of the population are Māori. However, 80% of the people that were coming to us for help through the week, and, and we see hundreds and thousands of people a year, uh, 80% of them were Māori, and I just it's even more hard-hitting than it had been for me in Auckland. And the desperation and the stories that you hear day after day after day after day. But that, that, I know it may sound cliche to people, but the light shines brightest in the dark. And so just these small words of hope, small words of encouragement, waiata, um, kai, all of those sorts of things. Love is even more meaningful for those who have not experienced it, whether it's structurally or personally. And so for me, how can I not hope when I know that I carry the light of someone who loves these people and is not satisfied until we all see the the fullness of um, life and shalom in their lives too, not just in mine. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, thank you, Hannah, for the work that you do with the Salvation Army, but also what you did today because it was really beautiful uh, and you led worship so well. And uh, just before you go, um, I, w- I was wondering if you would pray. No one else has prayed on this program. Would you pray for us in the audience? Absolutely. <laughs> O aroha mai kia mato. Father, we just give thanks to you because of your love and your concern for all of your children. All of your children. There is not one person listening who does not matter to you. And Father, regardless of where they sit in the history of the story or in the future of the story, Lord, you care about them. You care about who they are. And Father, I just pray for each person listening that you would speak to them about what their part is in this journey. Uh, Wherever they are in this country, wherever they are in the world, that Lord, you would shine your light in their lives and bring aroha bring compassion in a way that helps them to see the other next to them, to see the next person, that we would be people who are covenant keepers and that we would see uh, justice roll out like rivers and righteousness like mighty streams. So I pray for the power and the leading of your Holy Spirit because you can do far more than we could ever achieve by ourselves just with our own faculties. And so we ask for your Holy Spirit. We ask for your wisdom. We ask for your strength in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen.